Um, so it always, some, well, not always, sometimes it gives you added information over here on the left. So it says aqueous, and, and my numbers, by the way, might be slightly different from the ones, you know, you get on your account, but the way you work the problem is going to be the same. So it says aqueous ammonia is commercially available at a concentration of um, 16, what is that, 16 molar, okay? So then the question says, how much of the concentrated solution would you use to prepare 250 milliliters of 1.8 molar? So what should we use to solve this? Any ideas from anybody? I, I know that I'm given this. A concentration here, a volume, and another concentration. So I'm going to label those. I'm going to label this M1. This is a volume, and this is the second molarity. So this has got to be V2. Because that's the volume associated with that second molarity. Does that make sense? So what is this shaping up to be? What kind of problem do you think this is? Anybody remember the equation? This is a dilution problem. Okay, how much of the concentrated solution? When we talked about dilutions, we talked about you got two, two molarities. What's the, anybody remember the equation for dilutions? M1V1 equals M2V2. So it says how much of the concentrated solution? It'd be nicer if it said what volume, okay? But we're looking for what? We're looking for V1, okay? We are trying to find V1. So I'm gonna divide both sides of my equation by M1. So V1 is gonna be equal to M2V2 over M1. I don't have to change my volume to liters or anything. I can work with milliliters. And look, the answers tells you over here if you're really wondering, obviously we got to report it in milliliters. So that's nice. Again, we don't have to convert it to liters or anything when we're done. So we're just gonna plug these things in. So V1 is gonna be equal to, uh, mine's a 1.8 molar times V2, which is 250 milliliters divided by that 16. And the molarity cancels out. Okay, so what do y'all get? 1.8 times 2G. Again, use the numbers on your account for this, but it'll be the, use the exact same equation. You just plug your numbers in. 281.25, is that what y'all get? 281.25. Oh, wait, tell me, did it tell me? Correct. Was it, does it do that? Then it always do that. That's exactly how you would work it, okay? Questions on this, is that a dilution problem? Now, nowhere in the problem did it say, work this as a dilution problem, okay? So the hard part on this is figuring out what information does it give me? What equation should I be using? Okay, I'm gonna move on if y'all are good with that one. <clears throat> if, you need, if I need to go back, just let me know. Oh, 28.125, somebody get something different? So did y'all get 281 or 28? That's gonna, be, that's gonna be a big difference, right? So double check, Danielle, double check. I think maybe, maybe you meant to type 28.125. Uh, yeah, I accidentally typed in 18 times 250 in my calculator instead of okay, 1.8. Okay, so 1.8, okay. So it's just a simple decimal issue there. Thank you guys. I am not working these on a calculator right now. There we go. Now, I was wondering why it told me incorrect at first. Okay. Uh, 19.15. Again, I don't remember what the other numbering for this problem is, but I, I got questions on this one. So I'm going to zoom in. Calcium carbonate reacts with HCl according to the following equation. Oh, this looks so familiar. We did this one in lecture. We did this exact reaction in lecture. Okay, how many moles of HCl are in 85 milliliters of 0.13 molar? Now this is not a three part problem right now. This is just, what equation do we need to solve this? This is how many moles of HCl are in 85 milliliters of 0.13 molar? 
HCl. So we have a solution of HCl, it's 0.13 molar. And I'm, I'm given a volume and I'm asked for moles. Anybody know what equation we need? It's, it's not, I know you're given this whole chemical reaction. We'll probably use that in a minute. Here's what I know, molarity equals what? It equals moles over liters of solution, moles of solute over liters of solution. We are given the molarity and we're given the volume. It's in milliliters. milliliters. We can quickly and easily convert that to liters. Right? Um, so let's do that. We're going to convert 85. If you just joined us, we just finished working this problem right up here, 9.16. Okay, so that'll be on the recording. It was a dilution problem if you just joined. Now we're working this uh, 9.15 problem. So we're going to convert 85 milli. So we're just using the equation for molarity. And we're going to solve for the moles. We're going to convert 85 milliliters to liters. So 1,000 milliliters for one liter. And we're going to do 0 0.085 liters. All right, somebody tell me now, what do I need to do? Multiply both sides and then, yeah. Yeah, let's plug in the pieces or rearrange our equation. If we just want to go ahead and rearrange our equation, we're solving for mole, so we want to get that by itself. So you multiply both sides by liters. So what you get is that the liters times the molarity is going to be equal to moles. That's the equation we're going to use here because the question says how many moles of HCl. So then we're just going to plug in 0 0.085 liters times, because what is units of molarity? I'm going to, I'll be right back out. What is units of molarity? This is, remember how I kept rewriting this in lecture? This would be like saying 0 0.13 moles per liter. That is units of molarity. So now we're going to multiply by that. And, and if that helps you to write it that way, instead of just a capital M, you see the liters cancel. And that's going to be equal to the number of moles. So how many moles is that? 0 0.085 times 0.13. And it tells me two sig figs. I have an honest question. We don't go over sig figs in the class. So is it super frustrating? I have no control whether Mastering Chemistry asks you for sig figs or not because the questions on here are just like pre-written question. Is this super annoying or can y'all deal with the fact that it says two sig figs when that's something I haven't talked about in class? The only thing that's annoying to me is whenever there's like not even going to be two sig figs in the answer and then I freak out thinking I got the wrong answer because there's like only one. But besides that, it's not that crazy. So if it doesn't give you any instruction on sig figs, does it sometimes count you off if you don't have the right number of sig figs? I think it just says It says what? I'm not sure. understand. Sometimes it says rounded differently or something. Or like sometimes it'll okay. say. Yeah, so like sometimes there's no Go ahead. Like sometimes it won't specify. So whenever you like do it how you think it should be, they'll like redo it. They'll be like, you need a different amount of sig figs. So they won't like specific. and there's like no instruction on it no on how many yeah like i just put in the chat but i missed part a of this question because i put my answer is like 1.1 times 10 to the negative 2 and i just put 1.1 or you know 0 0.0 whatever and it just kept on counting it wrong and then eventually it was like you only have two more guesses so i just requested the answer because i wasn't well, yeah of course that's frustrating Ugh. so that's hard because I totally get why that's frustrating. I, I think I didn't, I've, so, I've hand selected these questions for the assignment. So I know what questions are on there, but I didn't realize that if it's asking, if it doesn't give you any instruction on sig figs, I didn't think, I, you know, I wouldn't think sig figs matter. So since I haven't taken it as a student and then you type it in and it tells you you're wrong because you don't have the right sig figs and you miss points for that, that's really frustrating. I mean, there was that first general assignment you gave, and they kind of gave a how-to with significant figures. 
on the website mm -hmm. but of course that was like you know three or four months ago so forever ago but it i'll try to look into this because i can totally see how that's fresh i mean do you feel like you've missed a significant amount of points on homework assignments because of that in particular thing or do you think it's been like a minute amount pretty minute but just enough to kind of you know regular like I, you know, right. I, I'm at a 80 something when I could add a 90, you know, because of the. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Well, thank you for this feedback because that gives me some things to think about. Anyways, I don't want to waste our time on that since we're working problems, but I did want to ask that question. All right. Um. So, what did y'all get for the answer, by the way? I got to scroll up in the chat. Uh, point zero one one. Okay, so we got zero point zero one one zero five. So it says using two significant figures. Okay, so then we would type it in zero point zero one one, and we see what it would tell us. Okay, so we got these two significant figures right here. So that is what I would do, and hopefully that would not count you wrong um okay okay the mass of calcium carbonate needed for complete reaction with the hcl in a all right um so what we're going to do here how do how do we work this this has to do with um the three-part problem thing you guys remember we worked a three-part problem tuesday and is what mass of calcium carbonate so it's you solve something to do with hcl up here so now we've got to look at this balanced reaction it is balanced for you it's got coefficients in there um, you know how many moles of hcl you just calculated moles of hcl but now it's asking for the mass of calcium carbonate all right so we need to convert we need to use a mole ratio we need to convert from moles of hcl to moles of calcium carbonate what is the mass of calcium carbonate needed for complete reaction with the HCl and A? Well, the HCl and A, you just calculated the amount of moles of that. So what I'm going to do now, step one, is you're going to use a mole ratio. Convert from moles HCl to moles of CaCO3. Step two, is you're gonna do what? Once you get moles of calcium carbonate, how do we how do we convert to mass? What is mass? What is units of mass? Grams. Grams. So we're gonna use molar mass of calcium carbonate. And we're gonna convert from moles of calcium carbonate to grams. All right, this is a two-step problem. So it doesn't exactly mirror the whole three-step thing, but we do have to use a mole ratio. So what is our mole ratio? If I'm looking at this balanced reaction, for every two moles of HCl, it's one mole CAC of three calcium carbonate. All right. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, I'm actually, I like to, when I'm working these problems, take the full, full answer, like with all, be as accurate as I can be. And that's what I suggest you do as well. If you calculated this, you know, one, one, point zero one one zero five, use that and continue your, your thing. Don't just use the point zero one one. All right. So, uh, step one, let's do 0 0.011. I'm going to zoom in. This is moles of HCl. I forgot to write my units up here. And we're going to use the mole ratio. So it's for every, what was it? Was it two to one? Yeah, two to one. So for every two mole of HCl, it's one mole CaCO3. So then we just divide this by two. But you can actually keep going. You don't have to just stop there and get your answer. I wonder if I erase this, if that will let me. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going because we know we wanna go up. I'm on eraser. We wanna go all the way to grams. So for every one mole of CaCO3, this is where I'm plugging in. This is step two. This is where I'm plugging in the molar mass. What is the molar mass of calcium carbonate? We need the molar mass of calcium carbonate. So calcium, I believe, is it 40.078? Off. 
Uh, hold on, I'm looking for the periodic table. Then you'll see, okay, so we got 40.078, and then I got the 12.011 from the carbon, and three oxygen, 16 times three should be, is that 48 as well? Mm -hmm. So we gotta add all of this up. Um, 90, 100.089 gram per mole. All right, so there's the molar mass calcium carbonate. So that's what we're going to plug in. And you see how fudging um, decimals over here, like if I was just like, oh, it's 40, 12, and 48 you would miss some decimals and you would probably be off. So sometimes you might be told you're incorrect on mastering chemistry if you're not being trying to be super accurate when you're adding things up like a molar mass, okay? Like if I, if I left off these decimals, I bet you I'd get the wrong answer on mastering chemistry, okay? So, so try to be as accurate as you can. And that's why my rule of thumb is usually two decimals, okay? And if, if the periodic table gives you three, great, use all three. So that is just kind of a, a a little tip for trying for being accurate and getting right answers on mastering chem. So, uh, what do we got overall? We got 0 0.01105 divided by two times 100.089. Okay, so we got 0. 5505. And that's going to be units of grams. All right. So two sig figs, so we'd say 0 0.55 grams. Okay. Now, um, if anybody is able to find any example of any problem, like what we we're talking about earlier, where it does not give you specific instructions on sig figs, and screenshot that problem or let me know what problem that is. Um, I'm going to scroll through myself and try to find some, but if anybody knows of one that you're like, this ticked me off because it was one like what we talked about, send that to me so I can look at it. And just start going through some of these. Um, okay, questions on this one. This was part A and B of 915. So overall, the steps are not too bad. I think the hard part here is knowing what to do, like knowing which equation to use, I think that's what's presenting a challenge. Molly said, can we do number 13 next? Um, which one's number 13? Mine 13 is 9.91, .9 but I don't know if that's the same. No, I bet it is. Okay, so I don't have that one on here. So let me, let me pull that one up actually. Um, here it is, 9.91. So this one says, okay, here it is, loading. In many states, a person with a blood alcohol concentration of 0.08% volume per volume is considered illegally drunk. What volume of total alcohol does the concentration represent? Assuming total blood volume of five liters. Mm. It's a good problem. What does it mean by volume per volume or whatever? We, in lecture, you guys remember, I'm going to go to the equation because we're, there's an equation that we need. Let's go find it. So right before we started working problems last Thursday on, uh, so all these problems that we worked on, are you, can you see my, can you see my iPad? Am I scrolling? Okay. Um, okay, we, we got to this slide and we said there may be times where you have instead of a solute that's like in grams and a solution that's obviously a liquid, there may be times where you have um, a volume per volume or a mass per mass, okay? And so that's why I asked these two questions and that's why we wrote out equations just like this, gram per gram and milliliter per milliliter. Uh, and I actually messed this up. I just see this should be volume per volume. Okay, because when you have one liquid in another, 
Okay, that's what you have here. You have alcohol, which is a liquid. You have blood, which is a liquid. These are two liquid solution, liquids and they're mixed together in a solution. So we're gonna use a, an equation that's volume per volume. This one would actually need to be written weight per weight. And this would be written volume per volume. Okay, so this is the equation we're gonna use to solve this, all right? So let me just erase right here. And did you say for that one, it can be like any, as long as the liter or milliliters are like the same on top and bottom? Mm -hmm. So um, you've got the percent, it tells you that a person with a blood alcohol concentration, at least my problem says, um, if your blood alcohol concentration is that percent volume, volume, that's when you're drunk. Okay, what volume of total alcohol does this concentration represent? So here's what you have to decide. If it's a blood alcohol content, which one is my solute? Which one's my solution? So in other words, the solute goes on top and the solution goes on bottom. So that's the only thing that's kind of tricky. Maybe you have to decide. So do you think the alcohol is the solution or do you think the blood is the solution? Which one's present in greater amount? Do you have a little bit of alcohol in your blood or do you have a little bit of blood in your alcohol? Gross. <laughs> Obviously, you have alcohol in your blood, okay? So it should be the volume of alcohol versus the volume of blood. That's the solution times 100, okay? This is making a little bit of sense now. Um, we're given a blood volume of five liters. So we're gonna plug that in, but we're gonna plug it in in milliliters. So five liters, and we're gonna come over here. We should know five liters, you know, there's one liter, a thousand milliliters. It's gonna give us 5,000 milliliters, right? So that is actually what I'm gonna plug in right here. And in case you guys are wondering, what problem is this? It's 9.91 where Molly said number 13, was that right, Molly? On the homework. Yeah. Okay, so now we're just solving for the volume of alcohol. So we're gonna divide both sides by 100 and we're gonna multiply both sides by 5,000. Okay, so the so the hundreds will cancel, boom, right there and there. And then the 5,000s will cancel as well. So what that leaves you with is you're gonna do 5,000 times the 0 0.08 divided by 100. 5,000 times 0 0.08 divided by 100. How do the units work? Well, volume per volume is milliliter per milliliter. So the milliliters are there, cancel that, and you're going to be left with just milliliters for your alcohol. Okay. I agree. This was really challenging because we did not work one just like this in lecture. I, I did hint at the equation, okay? But you're right, we didn't work one just like this in lecture. So for this to be challenging and difficult, you're not wrong. So I'm glad we're getting to do this together. In other words, I'm glad y'all blew up my email about all this stuff. Okay, any questions on this? Does that make sense what we just did and, and how we solved it? <clears throat> yeah, what'd y'all get? Four, four milliliters? Okay, and then that problem says two, signif two significant figures as well. So if, if you do, you need to do 4.0. If it's exactly four or if there's any kind of decimal. Did y'all get the same thing? Okay, what then y'all got? Okay, well, um, all right, let's go back over here. 
So then Kara says 9.83. I, oh, I have that one right here. So yeah, I'm gonna definitely be working that one. Um, yeah, Kara wants that. And then 9.15. I don't have that one on here, but we can look at that. Let's look at this 9.6. I got questions about this one. And then we'll look at those others. I think we should have plenty of time. Okay, I'm trying to zoom in as much as I can, but it says sodium thiol sulfate, whoop, Na2S2O3, the major component in photographic fixer solution. I don't think this is anything we have to use anymore, but I will tell you, anybody been up to Crystal Bridges before, the art museum? That had a really cool art install. Um, what was the dude's name? He was a famous photographer and he did a lot in like Yosemite and stuff. And it showed them how like they have to do all these steps like fix their film. So I was like, so glad photography is not that way anymore. But um, they used to have to do this stuff. So it reacts with silver bromide to dissolve it according to the following reactions. We got silver bromide, there's our sodium thiosulfate. And wow, look at this, you're making all these crazy products. The sodium with, with silver and um, uh, sulfate, thiosulfate, and then you got a sodium bromide component as well. So there's the balance reaction. Now it says how many moles of sodium thiosulfate would be required to completely react or react completely with uh, 0.58 grams of silver bromide. Okay, how do we do this? Um, again, anytime you're given info on one reactant or product and it's asking you for information about another reactant or product, you're going to have to use a mole to mole ratio. Okay, so if we're going to use a mole to mole ratio and convert ultimately from moles of AGBR two moles of Na2S2O3. First, we've got to have moles of silver bromide, right? Well, we don't have moles of silver bromide right now, we have grams. So back up, the first thing we need to do is convert from grams of AGBR to moles using molar mass. Y'all can do that all day long, okay? Grams to moles, moles to grams. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. This is step number one. So step number one, Take the 0 0.58 grams of AGBR. And we need a molar mass. Somebody Google molar mass AGBR. Tyler said 187.77. So 187.77 grams. Okay, but we wanna, we wanna go one step further, right? It says how many moles? So why don't we just go ahead and plug in the mole mole ratio? I mean, you can pause and solve for your answer here, or you can just next go ahead and plug in the mole ratio. Okay, I know I want to cancel. Uh, what is my mole ratio? Uh, one to two. So for every one mole AGBR, it's two moles of Na2S2O3. So that was step two, the mole ratio. That was step one, that was step two. So does everything cancel properly? Grams of silver bromide, moles of silver bromide, and we're left with moles of sodium thiosulfate. So we'll do 0.85, sorry, I said that backwards, 0 0.58, 0 0.58 divided by 187.77 times two, 0.58 five eight divided by 187.77 times two. What do y'all get? Okay. Um, so again, this is kind of like one of those three part problems. Oh, I'm looking up something really quick. Yeah. And I had to remind myself of something with SigFix real quick because it's just been a minute since I've actually uh, gone on. Remember, 
leading, we call these leading zeros. Okay, so if this tells you put it into three significant figures, um, you don't count the zeros. So some of you might be tempted to say, this tells you put it into three sig figs. You might be tempted to say 0 0.006, that's my answer. Um, you bet Blake, this is all gonna be recorded and posted later because we're gonna keep working. Um, but that's not correct. You've got to do 617. Okay, these are your three sig figs. Those zeros don't, they're not significant. Okay, leading zeros are not significant. And we call these, we call these just placeholders. So you would do 0 0.00617 because these are your three significant digits, not the zeros. Now, sometimes when like, if you're writing 4.0, like we did earlier, this does become significant because that's indicating that it's not 4.1, it's not 3.9, it's exactly 4.0. And that is significant in that case. It's a trailing zero, though, not a leading zero. Okay, uh, let's keep going because we got more work to do. And somebody wanted us to work. Somebody remind me. Who was that that said this earlier? Can you work? Uh, oh, Kiera, 9.83 and 9.15. Okay, so we're in. We're going to do 9.83, but I want to get to 9.15 with Kiera, too. All right, and then it says, how many milliliters of... Part B, 0 0.016 molar sodium, sodium thiosulfate contain this number of moles. So somebody tell me, I know y'all know how to do this now. What do we need to do here? What equation? M1V1 equals M2V2. No. No, it's much simpler than that. Just molarity, okay? Consider you've already solved for moles right here. You're given the molarity and you're asked for the volume, okay? Molarity equals moles over volume, over, I should be more specific, over liters. So you're going to solve for this piece right here. And you're going to turn that into milliliters. I watch a little educator person on Instagram. He's pretty popular, but he'll always say, solve for this chicken nugget right here. He calls everything a chicken nugget. So I almost said that. And I was like, that's going to sound really stupid if I say that. All right. Um, 0 0.016 equals my 0 0.00617 moles over liters. So how do we solve for liters in this case? Rearrange our equation, multiply both, both things times that L, but then you still don't have liters by itself. So now cross divide both things by 0 0.016. Okay, so that cancels and then the liters cancel. So what liters actually equal, and we're not solving for liters, we're solving for milliliters, don't forget. Wait, you did this Molly and your answer was wrong? Hmm. I had different I had different numbers though than we're using, but like the formula you were saying. Yeah. Like, well, that... then here you go, and you double checked because very easily what I could what I could see myself doing is forgetting to put a certain zero in. Yeah. Decimal. I like triple checked because <laughs> I was like, this should be right. But hey, okay. so, will you send me an email and say, hey, I had an issue with my grade on this problem, and I'll go to the grade book and look at it. Yeah. All right, so what do we get? 0 0.00617 moles. And remember, molarity is just mole per liter. So the moles cancel and you're left with liters. And you converted it to milliliters in the end. So 0 0.00617 divided by 0 0.016. <clears throat> what do y'all get? Y'all gonna make me do this? Okay, thank you. We got 0 0.3856 and that's liters. So convert it to milliliters, just multiply by a thousand, boom, move the decimal three places. It says two sig figs, what are we gonna do? We've got to write this in scientific notation. So it's gonna be, my answer in milliliters is 385.6 ml. 
So if we're going to report this in scientific notation. We've got to write it as three point, and I got a round, 3.9 times 10 squared mls. Um, I didn't see who asked that question, but was your number like how many milliliters of 0 0.017 and like the answer above it, like 7.56, whatever? Molly? Um, say that again, Bailey. Um, was your first answer like 7.56 times 10 to the negative three and the question have 0 0.017? No, my, I mean, in part B, I have 0 0.017, but my first answer above was 5.86 times 10 to the negative three. Okay, never mind. I was going to check with you, but never mind. Okay. Well, hopefully that helps at least. I'll check into it if that problem's being difficult. Are you gonna do some chemistry with us? No, not a chance. He loves chemistry. Don't let him fool you. Okay, uh, 9.83. A pickling solution is prepared by dissolving 410 grams of sodium chloride in 2.4 liters of water. All right, um, I'm actually very interested in this problem. I'm growing cucumbers this summer. And jalapenos. And we like jalapenos. I'm going to pickle some, I think. Okay, a pickling solution. So we're trying to calculate osmolarity here. How are we going to do that? Well, what is osmolarity? What's the equation for osmolarity? Equals moles of particles per liter. All right. So this can be confusing because that word particles seems very vague. Um, it's just ions or things that don't dissolve into ions. That's what we're considering particles here. So you need to ask yourself, we've got, what is our substance? It is NaCl. How many particles are we going to get from this when it dissolves? Or if it's aqueous. Now, if it's glucose or insulin or fructose, you know that you're not going to get um, multiple particles, okay? It, that is the one particle, the glucose or whatever. But here we have sodium chloride, so it will dissolve. So... Um, when it does, you're going to get particles of sodium and you're going to get particles of chloride. So we're going to keep that in on, on the back burner for a second. We'll come back to that. To calculate osmolarity, you've got to have moles of particles. Though. We don't have moles right now. What do we have? We have 410 grams of sodium chloride, 410 grams per 2.4 liters. All right. And look, moles per liter is, is a molarity in a sense, right? It reminds you of molarity. It's just slightly different from molarity. So why don't we calculate molarity? We need to calculate molarity. That's the first thing we need to do, number one, calculate molarity. Two, we'll solve for Oz molarity. And, and to do that, all we're gonna do is multiply molarity times the number of particles. That's all we're gonna to do to solve for that. So 410 grams, calculate molarity. So step one, we need moles of sodium chloride, okay? Actually, I'm gonna erase that M I just wrote. I don't wanna write that yet. So 410 grams. How many grams of sodium chloride are in one mole? Sodium is like 23. Chloride is like 35.456. Am I right? Am I right? Please tell me I'm right. 23 and 30. No, 35. Is that right or is that wrong? Is it 23.0? I think it's 23.0. Okay, unless somebody tells me I'm wrong, I'm going with it. 22.99. Okay, Adam, that's very accurate. Okay, we're gonna use 
All right, we'll use what Whitney put, 58.44. So we'll do 410 divided by that. And how many moles do we get? <clears throat> All right, seven point um, zero one six moles. And that is per what? What was the volume? Per 2.4 liters. So we're about to solve for molarity because molarity is moles per liter. So we're going to divide by the 2.4 liters. Okay, so what is our final molarity of sodium chloride? All right. And then what was step two? Solve for osmolarity. You're gonna multiply the molarity by the number of particles. So if we have, I wanna show you how this works out. If we have 2.923 molar NaCl, we, when that dissolves in the pickling solution, we're going to have 2.923 uh, mole per liter of the Na particles. Plus, we're going to have 2.923 mole per liter of the Cl minus particles. Okay, but we don't care about the, the fact that it, we don't care about the identity. We just want to know how many particles total. So you can either add it up this way, or that's why I said you can multiply the molarity by the number of particles if you know the number you're gonna have two particles. Every time one molecule of NaCl dissolves, you're gonna get two particles. So you can just multiply that by two. Is that what you'll get? Okay, two sig figs. We would just say 5.8. The help, the helpful. Okay. Although pickling things doesn't sound very good for your health. You're just soaking things in salt, right? Is that good in the long run? I don't know. Okay, um, there was another one. Kiara, you wanted me to work. Okay, so 9.5, and we got 15 whole minutes. And was it 9.15? 9.15, there it is. All right, Danielle, I'll do yours. And Bailey said, no, okay, we got three. Let's see if we can get all three done. We'll start with 9.15. Calcium, wait a minute. We did this one. Did I do it? Yeah, we did that one, 9.15. There it is. Was it a different one? Okay, we did 9.15. If you joined after we worked that one, it's on the recording. So I'm gonna go to, okay, good. Um, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the one Danielle asked for then. Danielle said 9.5, yeah, 9.5. All right, here we go, 9.5. Here it is. Okay, so if you're on mastering, pull up 9.5. So we're all looking at the same problem. <clears throat> this one says, all right, how many moles of each substance are needed to prepare the following solutions? Oh, these are good problems. Great problems. Oh, wait, I didn't even, how did I skip this? 
9.39, I was gonna work that one. Does anybody wanna see that one? That one was, I got a lot of emails about that one. Okay, Danielle, I'm putting 9.5 on pause. We'll come right back to that. I'm gonna do 9.39 first. Cause I, I know this is one I got a ton of emails about. Solubility of CO2 gas in water is 0.15 gram per 100 ml. All right, there's the first concentration I'm given. Um, add a CO2 pressure of 760 millimeters mercury. There's the first pressure that I'm given. What is the solubility? I'm looking for the second concentration. In a soft drink, which is mainly water, is bottled under a CO2 pressure of, there's the second pressure I'm given. But here's what I noticed, units of pressure are different. So I'm gonna convert 760 mmHg it's actually a very nice conversion. It's just equal to one ATM. So if you remember units of pressure, that was chapter eight. It's just, so I'm just gonna use one ATM, okay? So this is Henry's law. So we're looking for C2. So Henry's law says C1 over P1 equals C2 over P2. So we're looking for C2. So I'm gonna cross multiply both sides by P2 cancels on that side. So C2 is going to be equal to, there it is. And remember our P1, we converted to one ATN. So this should be C2 equals, what was it? Mine is 4.6 ATN. That's my second pressure given. times C1, uh, that's the 0 0.15 gram per 100 ml. Remember, leave that 100 ml there, that's part of your units, and divide that by one ATM. All right, what do y'all get? Two sig figs, 0 0.69 gram per 100 ml, okay? So again, you Henry's law says if you increase pressure, you increase solubility. So at a lower, at one ATM, it was like 0.15 and at you know over four times the pressure, it's over four times the solubility. It should increase proportionally, okay? All right, now part B is the hard part, seemingly hard. What does part B say? An atmospheric concentration of 380 ppm. We haven't even talked about ppm in this class. So don't let that throw you off. It's not the important part. It says corresponds to a partial pressure of, this is what you wanna key in on, 0 0.00038 ATM. What percentage of the CO2 originally dissolved in the solution in part A remains in the solution after the soft drink reaches equilibrium at the ambient atmosphere, which is just, um, so I, I, it's almost like we open the soft drink and we've let it equilibrate to atmospheric pressure. That's kind of what ambient atmosphere means. All right, so um, we're looking for a percentage, all right? Anytime you're calculating a percent, what you're doing in very like general layman's terms is you're doing part, over whole times 100, part over whole. So what happens if, if we release the pressure in the can, a lot of that CO2 is gonna bubble out and a portion of it will be left, all right? Um, but here's what, here's what I know about Henry's law. C1 over P1 equals C2 over P2. These are proportional. And what we wrote on that slide is that if pressure decreases, concentration decreases. If pressure increases, concentration increases proportionally. Okay, so if it, if it doubles pressure, then concentration doubles. If, if pressure is halved, concentration is halved. Does that make sense? So I already have the pressures given. I know it was at 4.6 ATM up here initially, and now it's at 0 0.00038 ATM. All right, 
So I can just plug this in and, and get a ratio. It would correspond to the ratio of the concentrations as well, because it's asking uh, what percentage uh, originally dissolved. So you could also do this with concentration terms. So some of you are like, what the heck is she saying right now? Let's just work this out. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my original pressure and my new pressure. 0 0.00038, I'm gonna get a, a ratio from these, 4.6. I'm going to multiply by 100. I'm going to see what percentage of 4.6 is my new pressure. What percentage of 4.6 ATM is this 0 0.00038 ATM? Because if the pressure is decreasing by this amount, proportionally the, the solubility is decreasing. That's what Henry's Law says because they're proportional. So what do y'all get? When you do 0 0.00038 divided by 4.6, you should get 0 0.00826 is what Autumn got. Okay, and then that is after you multiply by the 100. So that is a percent. And so it says using two sig figs. Okay, so it would be 0 0.008, you'd round 3%. Because these are not significant zeros. You can also do this another way, but it's a long way and it's a hard way. You could resolve using Henry's law, solve for a new concentration and then do the ratio of the concentrations. Like here's my original one and then what would be my new, con but if you do it this way, it's same answer, get the same answer. Does it make sense what we did? We took a ratio of the pressures and we turned it into a percent as a way to measure the ratio of the concentrations. Y'all are like, mm-hmm. I hope so. I hope it makes sense. It's a hard problem, though. I agree. We didn't work one like that in lecture. I mean, we worked Henry's Law, but not quite like that. Okay. Um, well, Here's what I can say about hard problems that you've never seen before. I hope you can appreciate one aspect of them. They are challenging you to grow and, and expand and think in ways you haven't thought before. Okay. And I know maybe some of you don't care flip about that, but I think you should because hopefully as a professional on the job, you're going to be willing to accept new challenging situations and think about them and solve them with patience and things like that. So, um, okay. Uh, we got five minutes. So Bailey had one. Well, no, Danielle had one, 9.5. And I'm looking at it on my screen. We're going to do an example of that. And hopefully, Bailey, maybe I can get to that one you asked about. Let me open up a new, um, a new note. <clears throat> I need a blank screen. All right, I know you can't see 9.5 on my screen right now, but I'm going to read the problem and then we're going to, I'm going to write down the info and try to solve it in five minutes. Okay, how many moles of each substance? are needed to prepare the following solutions. So we're trying to solve for moles here. So this is 9.5 and this is part A. Um, it says you've got 50, my problem says 52 milliliters of 8.0 mass per volume percent. I love it when it does that. KCl, and it says the molecular weight of KCl is 74.55 gram per mole. Okay, um, so we're trying to solve for moles here. We have a weight volume percent. So what's the equation for weight volume percent? It is mass volume percent equals grams solute which is my KCl over milliliters of solution, which is my 52 times 100. All right, and it says, the question is how many moles? I don't have moles anywhere in my equation. Oh no, what am I gonna do? 
Somebody tell me, what should I do? Did I write the wrong equation down? We are given molar mass, okay. But look at my equation that I just wrote. I've got mass volume percent equals grams of solute, grams of KCL. I'm given the percent and I'm given that bottom part, the milliliters. I'm gonna plug those things in, solve for grams and use the molar mass to convert from grams to moles. Does that make sense? I'm gonna plug everything in, solve for grams, then use the molar mass to convert from grams to moles. So um, we got, plug it in, 8%, I'm gonna scoot this over a little bit, equals, we're solving for grams, KCL. And once we have that, we'll convert that to moles. Divided by 52 milliliters times 100. So I wanna solve for grams. So divide both sides by 100 and multiply both sides by 52 ml. Cancel, 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 cancel. Two times eight divided by one hundred four point grams KCL. Now, to use this little chicken nugget, I knew I would do it, and convert to moles. Four, oh, not seven, four point five five grams per one mole. So you should get 0 0.05, two sig figs, so five, six mole. And if you always get confused on how many decimal places do I put in, just put it in scientific notation. You should get it right every time that way. You do same thing on part B. Same thing, plug everything in, solve for grams, this time of acetic acid, use the molar mass, convert grams of acetic acid to moles. And Bailey said she figured out the question she had on 9.59. So I guess we're at time, we won't work that one. Okay, give me a, give me a check in, how are we feeling after all this? better. It's okay. You don't have to feel awesome about it. It's hard stuff. A lot of good, or I mean, a lot of hard equations. Um, there's other difficult problems on the homework. Okay. I know we didn't work through all of them, but Sorry. hopefully that gives you. Sorry. Do what? Now that you like work some of them, like I'm going back to some and I'm able to figure them out now. Don't know why. I guess I was having a stroke earlier. <laughs> um, well, I hope that helps. I hope